Hey guys, so what 25 years of coding taught me? So I'm gonna give you the four major points and then I'll go over the details. So number one, you will learn much more when you start getting paid to code. So don't get caught into tutorial hell. Number two, the best code is simple code. Number three, coding real world apps is an iterative process, meaning when you're writing real apps, don't try to write the perfect code, you know, for every object that you create or every page that you create or every view that you create, etc. No, 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 no. When you're writing real world apps, you just want to get from A to Z as quickly as possible. You want to get the thing functional. And then what you do, once you have the whole thing working from A to Z, then you go back and you start refactoring, which is basically rewriting and cleaning up code. And uh, that's how you do it. You iterate over it. First pass, second pass, third pass. That's how you write as well, by the way. Three passes, I find, when I write. Uh, number four, nobody wants to write good docs, but they should. Documentation in software is such an important part of writing good software. People don't like doing it. You sort of get caught up in writing a code. You should write docs along the way. At least start writing notes to yourself why you made certain decisions as you go along with your project, especially if they're complex. So with Studio Web, uh, we're working on Studio Web 5 now, and there's a lot of complexity in there, especially for the backend tools for, for schools. And a lot of times we sit there, I, we sit there and we, we figure out what, how we're going to engineer something, how we're going to a structure, a particular uh, functionality in the system. And uh, if you don't write down why you made those decisions, I can guarantee you a week or two weeks later, you're going to forget, especially six months later. So writing good docs for your application is very important. So there you go. That's the short version of the top four things off the top of my head, but I learned over the last 25 years as someone who's written code commercially. All right, let's get into some detail. Number one, you will learn much more when you start getting paid to code. This dovetails into one of, mis one of the misconceptions I like to point out. People getting new, who are new into software development, coding, or web development, whatever, it doesn't really matter which stack you get into. There's this preconception that you have to come to uh, the table with full knowledge of everything. So that's why you see people get caught up in all these tutorials because they're insecure about their level of skill. So they keep doing more tutorials and more tutorials and more tutorials and more tutorials. Real world coding is about learning as you go, especially in the first three to five years as a software developer. One of the number one skills, by the way, of a good developer is that they're able to learn quickly. So, as I've said many times, you learn the fundamentals, and once you have the fundamentals, you can jump into whatever specialization, whatever stack, whatever framework, whatever library you need to learn at that time. You will see as you get more and more into professional development, you're going to start having to evaluate projects, choose the languages and libraries that are best suited for that project. So as an extreme example, if I was going to get into machine learning, want to implement machine learning into an application, I'm not going to do it with PHP, right? Probably not going to do it with PHP. I'm probably not going to do it with Ruby. That's for sure. I'm not going to do it with a lot of different languages. I'll probably do it with one of the popular languages for ML. Python is probably the most popular of others out there. Sometimes you might do in C, C++ if you need to build, uh, build a very uh, fast core engine to your uh, AI solution. But at the end of the day, as a professional developer, you have to pull away from this notion that you are a PHP or you are a Python developer. You can specialize based on your likes and dislikes, but as you become more and more advanced, that becomes less and less of an issue. And as I've said many times, I told people in my career as a freelancer, I would go into the project with no preconceptions about which language or framework I was going to use to write the project. I would let the project demands 
and the environment in which I was working, mainly what infrastructure the business had invested in, I'd let that determine what language or stack I was going to use. In the early days, the first three to five years as a freelancer, I was really a Java zealot. Everything had to be Java. I love Java. I had developed my own framework in Java for web and everything was Java. You know, it's like uh, anything I saw had to be done in Java, which was silly and was immature of me as a developer back in the day. As I got better and more mature, I was language agnostic, language neutral, whatever work. As long as you have your fundamentals, you'll learn. That's why in my courses I teach fundamentals and then once you've done my fundamental courses, then everything else becomes super easy. You'd be surprised how much you learn by learning the fundamentals. You'd be very surprised because all the complexity that you observe and see in uh, more advanced libraries, more advanced stacks, if you will, in software, all those complexities are just basic stuff layered like a hamburger, like a sandwich. So if you look at it as a whole, it seems complex, but if you understand each layer, that's a burger, that's a bread, that's lettuce, that's ketchup, you understand, you know, what's going on. You know what I mean? Kind of a silly analogy, but it works. Maybe I'm hungry. Okay, number two, I said the best code is simple code. Again, any experienced developer, five, 10 years experience or more will realize this more and more and more. Best developers write simple code. Why? Because code has to be updated a lot of times, especially in a viable project. And if you have complex code, then that's going to be a nightmare to maintain, very expensive to maintain, and more prone to bugs. So write very simple code. Strive to simplify your code. If you can write code that just about anybody can read it very quickly and go, oh yeah, I knew what this guy was trying to do or this girl was trying to do, that makes you a better, maybe even a master developer. Simple code is simply the best. Simplicity in execution, simple code, is not unique to software development coding. Simplicity in execution is um, the trademark of any master in, in, in any field. So for example, I use martial arts as an example. I was first taught this when I was like a young teenager. I have to admit it, Bruce Lee. Bruce Lee talked about learning from a diff bunch of different sources, taking what's you liked what you thought it was good, ignoring the stuff or rejecting stuff you didn't like, and then simplify. Everything is about the simplification. So a beginner, if they're throwing a punch, they're going to throw a very wasteful punch. It might be like this. An expert will throw a very, very efficient punch. We'll get to the, we'll get to the point very quickly, the point being the guy's, the opponent's face. Code is like that too. Business is like that too. Great business is very efficient business. Great managers of companies will go in there and eliminate um, wasted processes in the business. An efficient business is a process uh, efficient uh, business. And so you're able to produce the product or service with the least amount of cost and the best quality. So same thing when you're writing code, strive to uh, be simple. I'm going to do a video on minimalism versus uh, advanced level software development coding. There's a lot of similarities there. Number three, coding real world apps is an iterative process. Iterations, one, two, three, it's a basic concept in programming as like loops, you know, boom, 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 boom. Every iteration, every time you do a pass, you refine the quality of the code. So that's why I say when you develop your app, the very the alpha. You want to get the whole working app out the door as quickly as possible, fully functional, because when you have a fully functional app, even if you got parts of it that's really, really written badly, having that fully functional app, even if it's crippled, it, uh, it gives you insight into what the app ultimately should be, how the code base should be structured. And in the initial stage, stages of software development, in the alpha stages, if you will, you don't know how the project will end up being. You don't know what feature sets will have to be there. You don't know, you may decide that you have to restructure your database store in a certain way, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So when you are uh, writing code, 
you want to get from A to Z, get the whole thing functional, and then you start refining it, refining it. As you learn about the use case, as you learn about how the app should be used and how it should be structured, then you could start writing more solid code. So as an example, with Studio Web, when we developed the prototype years ago, I just put a guy on there who was, wasn't, he was not terribly experienced in the back end, but I said, you know what, just, just throw it out. Here's the concept, this is the views, this is what we're gonna do. And we just got it out the door as quickly as possible, and parts of it was really stinky code, that was for sure. Uh, but we got it out the door, and we got it into the hands of real users, uh, schools and end users, etc. And that was important because when we actually had users actually using the product, then we learned exactly how the product should be. And I kept just uh, revising that code, refining that code, refining that code until version four, which we released a, a while back, a little while back. It was actually not that, not far, maybe six months ago. Anyway, version four of Studio Web was actually a total rewrite from scratch, but that's where the code base was solid right from the beginning because we knew the use case intimately, right? We had all that experience from versions one through three with the original Studio Web years of experience using the app and, 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 and evolving the app. So when we developed version four, it was super solidly mm. built. But again, you gotta remember software is generally an iterative process and you wanna get through your iterations as quickly as possible. With each pass, each iteration, the quality of the software will improve. Finally, you want to write good documentation. Good documentation is huge because it will help you remember why you made certain architectural decisions in the code. It will help you transfer the knowledge to the next set of people who might get on the project. So if you have, if you have software that's gonna be successful in any way, you wanna have good documentation. It's just so important in terms of uh, the quality of the project and in fact, uh, when it comes to open source software, one of the big factors that differentiates the successful open source projects versus the failures is good documentation. So there you go. I have much more to say on this subject, but my uh, camera is uh, giving me the flashing light saying, that's it, buddy, you got no more time. So that's it for today. I hope you find this vlog useful.